Good morning, brothers and sisters, and welcome to Jerome Church. My name is Pastor Bruce Dickerson, and I'm the lead pastor here at Jerome. We're so happy that you've decided to join us here for worship this morning. Let us now join together with our praise team as we come together to praise the Lord in song, prayer, and worship. Your love is like radiant diamonds bursting inside us. We cannot contain your love will surely confound us like blazing wildfires singing your name God Yeah. 
My name is Meredith Braniger, and I am the Director of Family Ministry here at Jerome. All this month, Jerome kids have been on a big adventure exploring true stories from the Bible. We have learned that Jesus changes lives, Jesus loves everyone, Jesus gives us freedom, and Jesus helps us share his story. We have also gained some tools along the way, and speaking of tools to help us explore, Today, your challenge is to make a lighthouse, to remind you to be on the lookout, to do all the things we have been learning about, and to remind you of our great God who is always looking out for us too. As always, be creative. You can use paper, empty cardboard tubes, even a plastic cup to make your lighthouse. Some of you may have seen a lighthouse on your own adventures, but if not, you can find inspiration and share your creations on our Jerome Kids or Jerome Church Facebook groups. And if you need a coloring page, we have one for you in the links or description on whichever platform you are watching on today. How do we keep watch? Here is Pastor Bruce to help us take a closer look. Would you pray with me, brothers and sisters? Gracious Heavenly Father, with the words of my mouth and the meditations of each of our hearts, be pleasing in your sight, our Savior and our Redeemer. Draw us closer together this morning through your word. We ask this in your precious name. Amen. Our scripture lesson for this morning comes from the book of Mark, chapter 13, verses 32 through 37. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard. Be alert. You do not know when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back, whether in the evening or at midnight, 
or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. What I say to you, I say to everyone, watch. This, brothers and sisters, is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Now, when I was a little kid, I was a pretty well-behaved little kid, and my mom will be here at some point to confirm or deny that, depending on the day of the week, but I think she'll say I was a pretty good kid. But I used to upset my parents so much in one particular area, and that was cleaning my room. You see, they would often say, Bruce, in the next two hours, we're gonna leave you alone, and we want you to clean your room. Pick up your toys, make your bed, just straighten it up. And I would say, yes, ma'am, or yes, sir. And then I would set about the task of cleaning up my room. You know, the bed was no problem. That was something that was just easy to throw together. But then I would start to look around the room and I would see my toys. Maybe it was the Star Wars action figures or the G.I. Joes, or maybe it was some art supplies over here. Uh, maybe it was a little craft project over here. Maybe it could have even been something shiny. But somehow, two hours later, they would come back and they would find me playing with the toys and not putting them away. And they would get so upset. They would say, what happened? All you had to do was, uh, you know, two hours. We even told you an amount of time. But I would get distracted, lose focus, start playing with my toys, and they would get angry. Now you see, our story is very similar today in many ways. You see, we have been given instructions by the master of the house, if you will, the, uh, the owner of the home, that he goes away on a trip. And we don't know when he's coming back. Our scripture passage uh, from Mark actually says, About that day or hour no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. And what's being talked about there is the age, the time is to end, the end of the age, or the second coming of Christ, the coming of the kingdom. That's what the focus is. And oftentimes we have these questions of when is Christ going to come back? I pray myself, come, Jesus, come. 2020, I've probably prayed that prayer more than any other time. It's been a difficult year. It's been rough not being in service with one another. It's been difficult going through a transition and only knowing the staff and the few people I meet here and here, uh, here and there. I'll be excited to get to that point where I can see people without masks uh, because it's hard to recognize some of you from the brow of the nose up. It's difficult. It's unsettling. I look at the world and I go, is now the time? We all get stuck in that pattern. We lose focus on what we are supposed to do as Christians. But you see, Jesus has a special message for the disciples who are asking when this time is to come. He says, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father knows. So be on guard, be alert. And then he tells the story of a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge, each with their assigned tasks, and tells the one at the door to keep watch. Because if the master of the house, if he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. So what are you to do? Keep watch. And what Jesus is trying to tell us here is that instead of just looking for signs of the master's return, do your assigned tasks. As I said, we spend time looking at COVID and the coming up flu season, the elections coming up, the, uh, the distrust in our communities, the, uh, the strife going on with protests. Uh, and this is happening all over the world. And we ask ourselves as Christians, is this the time? Is Jesus going to come now? And that becomes our focus. But brothers and sisters, that's not supposed to be our focus. You see, we 
are supposed to be about our assigned tasks. The master told his servants before he went on this trip, the man said, do what I've just told you to do. So if you, you're assigned to wash windows, wash the windows. If you're assigned to sweep the floor, sweep the floor. If you're assigned to clean up your toys on the floor, clean up the toys on the floor. If you're assigned to take care of the crops, take care of the crops. But the master of the house, the Lord, the one who is returning someday, has given us assigned tasks. You see, our focus should be less on the second coming of Christ and more on living out the teachings of Christ's first coming. Generally speaking, United Methodists aren't focused on welcoming his, uh, we're, we're supposed to be focused on welcoming his saving grace to work fully in our lives. In the here and now, we experience that through the provenient grace, the grace that comes before and moves us to turn to Christ for salvation, the justifying grace that works righteousness in us and leads us to trust in our salvation, and of course, sanctifying grace that perfects us in lives of love of God and neighbor. That is to be our focus. All these experiences of God's grace experienced has God's grace. But often, attention to the second coming can actually get it pretty speculative. And we, as United Methodists, our history isn't about being speculative people. As the spiritual descendants of John Wesley, we are practical people attending to Christ pi primarily as he is present in worship and in the daily lives and needs of others around us. Brothers and sisters, put shortly, our focus should be about loving God, loving neighbor, and becoming and helping others become new and deeper disciples. That is what the master has called us to. It's not enough to be focused on a time and date that we don't know. We have been given the tasks. For those in the military, we have been given our marching orders. So don't worry about when Christ is going to return. Don't worry about the end of the age. Don't worry about judgment day, about the coming of the second kingdom. That day will come. We don't know the time or the place, but that day will come. But until that day comes, we have to continue on with our primary mission in all the ways that we can. So brothers and sisters, go forth this day, not worried about the strife that goes on about you, not worried about the coming of the kingdom, but be focused on the task the master has given us. Let us continue to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. Let us to continue to love our neighbor. And let us continue to become deeper disciples, seeing to the ordinances of God and help others become deeper disciples and even new disciples through the work of the Holy Spirit. May it be so. Thanks be to God. And amen.
Good morning, church. My name is Sarah Merriweather, and I am the Director of Connections here at Jerome. Today, Pastor Bruce reminded us that while we keep watch, our primary job is not to worry, but to love God, love people, and make disciples. Today, I have some opportunities to share with you all our ways that Jerome Church can help you along this journey. Each week, we share opportunities for you to be a part of the ways that Jerome Church is serving in our local community. Each Friday, food and volunteers are needed at Soup for the Soul, and coming up on October 20th, you can sign up to serve at Common Ground. You can learn more about volunteering in a local mission by clicking on the links in today's video description, uh, by visiting our website, or emailing us at missions at jeromechurch.org. I also want to encourage you to complete your Digital Connect card while you are watching today. You can do this right now uh, with your smartphone or another device by clicking on the link in the video description or by texting the word CONNECT to 614-587-7871. You'll receive a link to a form to complete your information and to let us know how we can pray for you and support you as you take your next step with God. As a church community, we have the opportunity to continue to give financially to the missions and ministries that are the lifeblood of Jerome Church. Your generous giving supports all of the ways that we are the church together. You can give right now by texting the word GIVE to 614-541-3301. And if you're looking for a way to establish a regular pattern of giving, you can also sign up to give electronically through ACH or Bill Pay by contacting our church office, or you can mail a check to Jerome Church at the address below. This next week is an exciting week for Jerome Church as we have the opportunity to gather for worship in person two different times. The first opportunity will be this Wednesday, September 30th, where we will gather for our final outdoor worship at 6.30 p.m. in the parking lot at Jerome Church. Skyward Grill will also be on site serving up dinner options for purchase from 5 to 7.30 p.m. Then on October 4th, that's a Sunday, we will begin our in-person Sunday worship services. Additional details about these worship opportunities were sent in your weekly email this past Friday and are also available on our website and our Facebook page. Registration will be required for everybody that is attending and we will adhere to social distancing and state guidelines. We are so very much looking forward to seeing you all in whatever way you choose to worship with us this next week. And if you're not ready to come back in our building yet, uh, or if you worship with us online from afar, know that we will continue to offer an online worship option every Sunday in the same way that we have done since March. As we conclude our time of worship together this morning, join me in praising God by singing this closing song together.
day it has been to worship with you. Thank you for taking the time out of your week to pause and worship God with your church family. As you begin a new week and another new obstacle presents itself in this most challenging year, remember that God has for you a plan for peace and for rest. While you keep watch, I pray you live a life poured out for God, loving him and all of his beloved children. Have a great week, everyone. This is amazing, babe. This is amazing, love.